Well, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be looking at something I did with the Jaguar S-Type R a few weeks ago in terms of troubleshooting a problem that I had. So I had the restricted performance light on the 2003 Jaguar S-Type R, the 4.2 V8 supercharged one. I just wanted to understand where the problem with was rather than say having to go and start replacing random parts and after a little bit of research um, I found that it was possible to uh, get a copy of a Jaguar diagnostic system uh, it's known as SDD which is stands for symptom driven diagnosis and within that suite of tools uh, there is some software known as IDS, which is the legacy software, which is compatible with my 2003 Jaguar S Type R. So uh, what I want to show, first of all, is the fact that I've got a little box here containing a JLR Mongoose diagnostic cable. So I'll get that out. Here's the end that goes into the car. So. And it's just a USB driver or USB connector. So this will just go into my laptop. So hopefully what you can see at the moment is my uh, Lenovo ThinkPad uh, Windows 10 Enterprise Desktop. And apart from some recording software, you can see I've got VMware Workstation 16 installed. I will list some of the links to the software and what I've used to do this um, in the description below. Essentially, we've got a Windows XP image running, which is here and it's already started. So uh, this came from a supplier who kindly gave me this image. It's already pre-configured uh, with the uh, Jaguar Land Rover JLR symptom driven diagnostic software. So what I'm going to do now is attempt to uh, load up the software just by double clicking it. Now you have to bear with us. This is a uh, Windows XP is an older system, uh, probably maybe some 24, 25 years old now. And the software itself is using Java virtual machine, so it can run a little bit slow. Let's just continue here. So I've just uh, launched SDD. I'm going to click continue. And it's asking me to plug in the communication device, which is this cable here, JLR Mongoose diagnostic OVID2 cable. So I'm just going to plug that into here. And this should just present automatically to uh, the virtual machine. And you can see here we've got device connected. The Mongoose Pro JLR device is connected and ready for use. The other way I can tell it's confirmed is that this icon up here has now gone green. If I now click continue, there's a couple of options here. So if you have a Jaguar that's maybe a 2005, 2006 year onward model, uh, this should uh, automatically read the vehicle identification number. You just click read and it will pop it up automatically for you. For cars predating 2005, you're probably going to have to uh, enter the VIN in manually. You should be able to paste that in. And then I can click identify vehicle and you can see there's a small progress bar here as it searches for it so uh, at this point it says it's invalid and the reason it says it's invalid is because this is not actually connected to the car so the next step is to go outside get this connected to the car and continue with this process okay so I now have the Ovid 2 JLR mongoose cable connected. So hopefully this time if I hit identify vehicle, you should think about it. So this is expected just for a general awareness. I have the vehicle in uh, ignition co uh, ignition position two. So everything's alive and we know that the JLR mongoose cable is successfully connected and this software is is this software is successfully connected to the car. Point to note, really important that your laptop has a fully charged battery. 
And also, um, if your car is not in regular use, then I would strongly recommend that you connect a trickle charger, something like a C-Tech trickle charger or battery conditioner charger, just so that you don't uh, lose power. Because in position two, clearly everything's primed up, fuel's primed up, we've got fans going on in the background. You don't really want to drain down your battery if your battery's in not very good health. So back onto the screen here. You can see here that it's got a legacy IDS tools screen. This basically means that it's detected based on what it's first talked to with the car. The VIN number um, and the interface with the car means that it's not compatible with the Jaguar symptom driven diagnostic system. So we're going to instead launch the legacy IDS tools. And if I just click on here, see a little pop up there advising that we're launching the legacy IDS tools, the integrated diagnostic software. This takes a moment or two to load up. And whilst it's doing that, it's going to ask me for uh, the country that I'm in. So I am going to choose United Kingdom and hit the tip box. Uh, and for the uh, town city, I'm not so worried about this. This is to do with the dealer registration. So I'm just going to choose other for now and click OK. It just says here you should really go and fill in your JLR contact details. Well, I don't really need to worry about that. The first thing is you're you're greeted with uh, this operator warning message here. Just saying, make sure you do sensible things like the cars correctly uh, parked up and the parking brakes applied, all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to hit this tip box down here to proceed to the next screen. So uh, again, there's another another warning system on here as well, just to say that. Uh, if we perform any diagnostics, it could cause fault coast to be logged. And, and just on that point, I think it's really important to recognize that this is old software. Also, the car that it's likely to be plugged into, if it's using this IDS system, is going to be quite old. In this case, it's my 2003 S Type R. So that car is 21 years old. There is a good chance that we could get some fairly low level codes on this that could be erroneous. Uh, so just to be aware of that. I'm just going to click OK again. We would like to read the diagnostic trouble codes now. So that's not fitted. Fine, so I can confirm all that. Not fitted. Confirm that. So now we're just going to hit the uh, ignition position to on, complete vehicle and see what we can find in terms of codes. So it's just currently probing that at the moment. I'm in ignition position two. So some of these will be slightly erroneous. Some of them will be by design. I know I have an issue um, with a communications failure with the adaptive damping ride control. Similar with the um, amplifier. What I'm really interested in is mostly the engine codes. And you can see here that we've actually got uh, P111, if you just click on it, and then come on to the right hand side, you can see that system checks complete since last memory clear. So basically, uh, P1111 is an expected error code because actually it's a sign that we've actually been able to collect information. You then toggle on to P1582. So this again is just uh, indicating that we've collected um, some information some flight code information there and I can see here on this we've got freeze, some freeze frame data where it's snapshotted when uh, the flight recorder information was recorded and I can see on here that we've got some fuel trim data so minus 234 on the short term fuel trim on bank one 
minus 78 and bank two for the long term. And all of these, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with these values here because uh, these are well within tolerance of the 25% that for the fuel trim values. You can see there we've also got an intake manifold absolute pressure reading of 59. You can see that we had a tick over, 554 is the engine speed at the time. Mass airflow sensor in terms of grams per second flow was 797. So this kind of stuff's quite quite useful. And just to note that this code does not indicate failure of a component. It just means that we captured some data at a particular point in time. If I check through and if I close this off, I can also see here that all of the other areas, transmission control module, all of the other modules, there are zero error codes, which is ideal. You can see here communications failure. The AMP one is a B code, control module configuration failure. Um, if, if it's causing a problem, I can reconfigure it, but as it happens, it's not. The AMP works just fine. So I'm just putting it down to the age of the system. Now, the importance and significance of having all of these is that I am actually thinking of um, upgrading the air intake with a, a Caldufi um, airflow pipe. But I just wanted to make sure that I was actually error free. Uh, point to note, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, I was looking at uh, this and we had, I wasn't quite running 100%. Um, and what this was able to do, this piece of software here, it was actually able to um, give me um, error codes that actually pinpoint the part that actually failed. As it was as it happened, it was actually the mass airflow sensor, and the error codes that I got were related to low readings from mass airflow sensor and implausible air temperature sensor as well. Air temperature sensor reading that d 40 to 25 degrees. So all I was able to do, nice and straightforward, I was able to replace the mass airflow sensor. And since then, as you can see, we, we've been good, no error codes. Uh, prior to that, I did have a uh, check engine, a, a uh, restricted performance light came up on the dash that was intermittent, and that was just symptomatic with the failing mass airflow sensor. So once that was replaced, I was able to clear the codes, and uh, all has been well since. It's been for a, a good run, uh, about 200 mile round trip, no issues. So it's always good um, just to check on this. and. As I say, if you are thinking about any sort of performance upgrades or you have a concern that uh, maybe you suspect there's a problem with the car, then if you're able to uh, literally uh, connect in, get this cable. The cable is about £99. The software was included as well uh, from a particular vendor. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, very, very handy piece of software for just troubleshooting um, any issues in the car. Now, what I hope to do in a later video when I have time is look at um, connecting this up to my 2006 uh, Jaguar XJ TDVI Sovereign, the diesel. I hope there to demonstrate the SDD, the Symptom Driven Diagnostic Software, rather than this legacy tool, the IDS system, which I'm using with my 2003 S-Type. And finally, before I finish up the video, I just wanted to draw your attention to this section here. Uh, where if you do have to replace uh, any modules or configure existing ones, you can do that from within here. You can add accessories. And also there's a little section here called dealer options. Now, if I click on uh, the dealer options, and click OK. I can see I can need to switch the ignition to on. It already is on. So I'm just going to click the OK. And what it should be able to do is just quickly interrogate and load configuration for the car and here you get a number of um, options so if I look at the security locking area in particular you can see that I've got uh, a security sounder global closing of the doors um, but I haven't got automatic locking and um, I'll switch that off so basically this car doesn't actually have um, an alarm fitted. It does have the um, key coding, but it doesn't have any of the intrusion uh, sensors or anything like that. So that's why they're all set to 
um, disable. If you look down here as well, we've also got some convenience features, the dual climate control. Um, you can also do things with control moisture purge, activation, and so on and so forth. And also you can see here there's an option to clear out any uh, any codes as well. So I'll click on there. That one, it's not letting me to do that because it's obviously a comms error or config error, similar with that. But with other error codes, if you were to get some, then there is an option to um, clear. And that's just a rubber icon that comes up there, basically. So there are various options to do that, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think there's much else to really add on, on this one. Um, I hope you found this session um, useful. All I would say is um, rather than perhaps going to get a generic code reader, which will probably be limited just to emission controls and uh, the fuel trims and a few other basic codes, um, I'd suggest investing in this as it gives you the proper um, Jaguar software and also the detail codes, which means that if you are trying to troubleshoot, it's probably going to give you more accurate information. And so rather than to like fire the parts cannon, trying to troubleshoot various things, what you can do is literally zone in on the particular problem and do a deeper dive on the error codes, which is pretty useful, I think. So not an expert at this system, not a mechanic, just found this uh, particularly useful for troubleshooting the problems on the, on the S-type. And that resulted in the, me replacing the mass airflow sensor rather than having to target maybe oxygen sensors or doing smoke tests on the intake and all the other sort of diagnostics and replacement parts that one might have to do if uh, we're sort of being quite blind and just relying on uh, fuel trim values. So that's what we did. But anyway, hope you found this useful and plenty more content coming along very soon.